Okay, so the continuous random variable x has a commutative distribution function f given by f of x equal to 0 for x less than, to less than 1, f of x defined by the function k times x cubed minus x for between x between 1 and 2, and f of x equal to 1 for x greater than 2, where k is a constant. So, a part 1. We are asked to show that k is equal to 1 sixth. So, what we know is when we use this commutative distribution function for 2, so at the end point of that range 1 to 2, it will be equal to 1. So the first thing I want to do is state that f of 2 is going to be equal to 1. So what this means is k times x cubed, which will be 2 cubed, minus 2 will be equal to 1. So 2 cubed is 8, minus 2 is 6, so I get 6k is equal to 1, and so therefore k is equal to 1 sixth. And that is it. So how do we get the marks in this question? Well, first of all, just for this line here, stating the fact you know that the f of the endpoint of that range is equal to 1, we get one method mark. We then get our accuracy mark for a convincing case, so showing that you've substituted it in and evaluated to get that k is equal to 1 sixth. Okay, so let's have a look at A part 2. A part 2 says evaluate probability x lies between 1.25 and 1.75. So we can just use the cumulative distribution function straight away for this. Remember this is a little bit like your Poisson tables and binomial tables. And do probability of 1.75. Sorry, that shouldn't be a probability. That should actually be uh, f of 1.75. So it's the probability of x less than or equal to 1.75 minus f of 1.75. 2.5. So we're going to get 1 sixth, 1.75 cubed minus 1.75 minus 1 sixth, 1 1.25 cubed minus 1.25. Okay, so when we work through this, you can type this, I mean, you can try and type this into your calculator all in one go. What we then get is, uh, I mean, evaluating each of these individual bits separately if you were to do that. 0 0.6015, four decimal places, minus 0 0.1171. And of course, try and use the exact values where you can, stored on your calculator or actually by evaluating this all in one go. And so actually what happens is, when you work through this, you get the exact answer, 31 over 64, which is preferable, or 0.484 if you've given it as a decimal. Okay, so how do we get the marks in this question? Well, first of all, there is a method mark for indicating that f of 1.75 minus f of 1.25 is going to calculate that probability. Next, we get an accuracy mark if you've sorry a method mark if you've actually indicated along the way. I'm oh, sorry, it is an accuracy mark. Accuracy mark if you've indicated along the way and actually calculated these probabilities separately. And then finally, we get an accuracy mark if you've got this answer at the end here. So let's have a look at B part I. First of all, we want to find an expression for f of x valid for 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2, where f denotes the probability density function of x. What we know is that we can find the probability density function by differentiating the cumulative distribution function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do d by dx, so I'm going to indicate that I'm differentiating. 
I'm going to multiply out k times this, so 1 sixth times x cubed over uh, x cubed minus x. So I get x cubed over 6 minus x over 6, just so I've got standalone individual terms that I can differentiate. When I do this, I get 3x squared over 6 minus 1 sixth. Now, usually I would cancel here to tidy it up, but you're going to find that actually it's going to be much more useful in a second if I leave it kind of in this form. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write f of x equals, and I'm going to take the sixth outside, so 1 sixth 3x squared minus 1. And this is just going to help in a second. Having that constant outside, this is where you see often see probability density functions or commutative distribution functions with constants outside because those fractions can just be left outside as a factor and dealt with at the very end of the calculation. Now, part two. Part two asks us to find the expectation of x. So the expectation of x is found by integrating between 1 and 2 x times 1 sixth 3x squared minus 1 integrated with respect to x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the bracket. I'm also going to take this constant outside. So that constant is just a constant regardless. So I'm just going to take the constant outside. I'm integrating between 1 and 2. x times 3x squared will give me 3x cubed. x times minus 1 gives me minus x. And now I can integrate that. Okay, so it gives me a fairly straightforward polynomial to integrate inside the integral. And just leaving that outside means I can deal with a fraction at the very end. So I'm going to get 1 sixth integrating 3x cubed. I'm going to get 3x to the power of 4. Divide by the new power, it's going to be over 4. Minus x will integrate to x squared. And I divide by the new power over 2. And I'm going to integrate this between 1 and 2. OK, so this leads to showing our substitution, putting it in. 1 sixth times 3, lots of 2 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 2 squared over 2. And then we're going to take away 3 lots of 1 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 1 squared over 2. Close the brackets, close the square brackets. When I work this through, put this all in your calculator in one go, we come to an answer of 1.625. OK, so how do I get the marks in this question? Well, in B part 1, first of all, I get a mark for indicating that we are going to differentiate the cumulative distribution function. OK. Then I get an accuracy mark for stating some sort of arrangement of this probability density function. OK, so then how do we get the marks in the second step? Well, we get, for this stage here, a method mark and an accuracy mark for getting to the correct integral that we should be integrating. Now, if you've got the sixth inside, the constant inside, so you've got, say, x cubed over 2 minus x over 6, that's fine, as long as it's some arrangement, but it needs to be expanded correctly so there's no brackets like this bit here ready to integrate. Okay, we then get an accuracy mark for integrating and getting a correct value at this point here, or some arrangement. Again, you could expand this so it cancels, so you'd have x to the power of 4 over 8 minus x squared over 12, and then you get an accuracy mark 
for getting the answer 1.625. Okay, I hope that all made sense and that you understood it.